On June 21, 2021, a groundskeeper, while clearing ground cover, discovered a human body close to a trail on the southeast side of Metzen Lake in Golden State Park, San Francisco, California. The white male was lying on a blanket and sleeping bag, surrounded by trash and miscellaneous items. The man was wearing a tank top, dark jeans, underwear, and leggings. A small, partial can of chewing tobacco was located in his rear pants pocket. During the autopsy, the San Francisco chief medical examiner estimated the man to be about 45 years old. There was no evidence of trauma on the body. Based on the condition of the body, authorities estimated that the man passed away two weeks before he was found. When detectives were unable to identify the man, who became known as the Metzen Lake John Doe, and the case seemingly going cold, they reached out to the DNA Doe Project for help. The DNA Doe Project is a non-profit investigative genealogy research outfit that says on its website that it has become a go-to organization for law enforcement agencies and medical examiners across North America, helping them solve their most intractable cases. Right away, the team had an important clue a match in the range of a first cousin that was on his maternal side. From this, the team was able to identify the specific branch of the John Doe's family tree and determined he was one of six children. Only two of the siblings were male, and a proof-of-life study ruled out one of the brothers. This meant that in March 2023, the John Doe was positively identified as Kurt Jerome Aiken. Team leader Rhonda Kevorkian said, This case was unusual in two important ways. First, that the agency brought the DNA Doe Project in to help so soon after the John Doe's remains were discovered. And second, that we had a DNA match from such a close relative, these two factors allowed us to confidently identify Mr. Aiken quickly. After the identification was made, people came forward to shed light on Kurt's life. He was a homeless man living in Golden Gate Park. Like many people experiencing homelessness, Kurt was disconnected from his family. He carried no identification and no one came to claim his remains. Area residents knew him to be a local terror. One person stated that Kurt was friendly in the past, but developed some sort of hatred towards dogs and was known to verbally and physically attack people, especially women walking dogs in the area. A dog walker in the park named Reyna stated, he escalated to charging us on the trails and kicking the dogs, and she even shot video of him jumping out of the bushes, armed, and threatening to end her and her dog's lives. She also mentioned an incident in which he threw a rock through the window of her van, shattering it and showering the animals in glass and he was allegedly arrested in 2019 for throwing coffee on a woman, her dog, and her stroller. I am one of about a dozen women with dogs that he has attacked over the years. I was not a fan of the man, Reyna said. A woman's body was found beaten, strangled, and burned on Staten Island, New York's East Shore in 1991. It was a passerby that found the victim's body in the weeds off a South Beach Road just after dawn on September 20, 1991. She was found face up, handcuffed, partially clothed, and burned in a vacant lot. She was found with 17 blows to her head, and a hammer was recovered at the scene. Investigators believe the hammer recovered at the scene with Lloyd L. engraved on the handle was used to commit the crime. On the woman's body, 
Authorities also found two gold chains, a ring watch, 30 cents, and a pack of Newport cigarettes. Police were initially unable to identify the perpetrator or the victim, leaving the case unsolved. An individual with the name Lloyd L. was identified, but that was as far as it got. There was no other indication that he was involved. He could not be prosecuted or exonerated at that time, given the circumstances. The victim became known as the girl with the scorpion tattoo for decades, referring to a distinctive scorpion tattoo found on her body. In 2008, the district attorney's office revisited the case and submitted her DNA and her dental records to the FBI, but that did not result in any new leads. The case was revisited again in 2019 when Richmond County District Attorney Michael E. McMahon decided to use forensic genealogy technology in a joint effort with the FBI, NYPD, and New York Medical Examiner's Office. In March 2023, at a press conference, Michael McMahon announced that the victim had been identified as 30-year-old Christine Belusco. Christine was placed for adoption when she was an infant and was raised by a New Jersey couple. She lived in Clifton and worked for a clothing store. After she found out she was adopted, she left home in 1991 and briefly stayed at the Mount Airy Lodge in the Poconos in Pennsylvania. She had a two-year-old daughter named Krista Nicole Belusco. Christine and Krista were both last seen at the resort in September 1991. None of Christine's family members knew she had lost her life assuming she was safely living in Florida. Michael McMahon said, We have already notified Christine's family of her tragic end, and we continue to make all efforts to also locate Krista Nicole so we can let her know about who her mother was and what has been done to bring justice to this case. Despite the incredibly dedicated work of the NYPD at that time, Authorities were unable to identify her or locate the person who took her life so savagely and viciously at such a young age. Nearly 30 years later, in a joint effort with the FBI, my incredible team of detective investigators working with the NYPD detectives picked up the case and, working together, we employed the use of forensic genealogy technology unavailable in 1991 but invaluable in today's law enforcement world to bring closure and justice to those touched by crime. While the investigation into the case is ongoing, McMahon said investigators believe the perpetrator was known to her. There is absolutely no indication that this was done by anyone other than someone who knew her, given the facts of the case and what transpired in the way that her life was ended. That certainly makes us think that this was someone who knew her. It is an intimate type of slaying, McMahon said. An age progression photo of Krista was released, and the search for her whereabouts continues. There is currently no known information on who Krista's father is. If you recognize Krista Nicole or know anything about the slaying of Christine Belusco, Call the Richmond County District Attorney's Office at 718-556-7085. Human remains were found in the woods behind a hotel outside Atlanta, Georgia, on September 16, 1993. Someone had seemingly placed the remains behind an electrical unit that was covered by pine straw and branches in a wooded area that sat between a former Fairfield Inn and a vacant medical office. This was an apparent attempt to hide the body, which was already in an advanced state of decomposition. The inn, now Quality Inn Northlake, still exists and is located less than 20 miles northeast of downtown Atlanta. 
An autopsy concluded that the remains belonged to a middle-aged woman. Due to the state of the remains, investigators believed that the woman's life was taken between two weeks and three months prior to being found. No identification was found with the body, and although the early investigation determined that the victim had undergone extensive dental work and hip replacement surgery that may have caused her to walk with a gait, a lack of additional details about who the woman could be led the case to run cold. Finally, in March 2023, the DeKalb County District Attorney's Office announced that they identified the Jane Doe as 52-year-old Rebecca Becky Burke. Becky was eventually identified through forensic genetic genealogy, an advanced form of DNA testing that involved the National Missing and Unidentified Persons System and OTHRAM, a company that specializes in forensic genealogy to help solve cold cases. Forensic genetic genealogy combines traditional genealogy research with DNA analysis and is often used to identify both suspects and victims in criminal cases where more traditional identification methods have been unsuccessful, the district attorney's office said. Those tests linked Becky's remains to a family member, which allowed investigators to learn more about her and her background. Authorities say Becky may have also used the last names McChesney or Barnes, and her last known residence was in either the Marietta or Smyrna area of Cobb County, Georgia. A cold case task force is seeking information about a possible suspect. DeKalb County District Attorney Sherry Boston urged anyone who knew Becky or worked at the inn where her body was found around that time to contact authorities. We are very grateful to finally have identified Becky Burke's remains, but the work does not end here, Sherry Boston said in a statement. Becky Burke was described as white with long, curly, light brown hair. Officials also believe her to have stood at 5 feet 5 inches and weighing close to 130 pounds. If you have any information about Becky's last days, please contact our cold case tip line, 404-371-2561. The body of a male was found on June 11, 1984, by a farmer in rural Lincoln County, Missouri. The body was discovered inside a pump house near Highway F outside Troy, Missouri. The man was wearing an expensive Bill Blass gray suit with red pinstripes, a Windsor tie, and a cashmere peacoat. An autopsy determined that the man lost his life months before being found. He suffered a fatal gunshot wound to the back of the head. Analysis performed at the time of recovery suggested that these were the remains of an adult male of European ancestry and between 40 and 80 years old. He likely stood between 6 foot to 6 foot 2. Unfortunately, investigators were not able to name the victim, let alone the perpetrator, so the case went cold. Then, on March 29, 2023, the Lincoln County Sheriff's Office announced in a press conference that the John Doe had been identified. A DNA match finally identified the victim as Jack Leonekert, a 50-year-old real estate agent who had been living with his wife and son in Florissant, Missouri, when he went missing in 1982. The breakthrough is thanks to forensic genetic genealogy, the increasingly common practice of identifying DNA through comparisons to genetic profiles in genealogy databases. Now that detectives have a name, Captain David Hill said, they are working to solve who took Jack's life and how his body ended up on a Lincoln County farm. One of the interesting things about cold cases that are this old is you have to rebuild, Hill said. 
Who did they hang out with? Who are their friends? Where did they work? What did they do? Authorities believe Jack Leoneckert lost his life not long after he went missing in 1982. His car was found a week after his disappearance at the St. Louis airport. Hill said it was too early in the investigation to elaborate more on the details of Jack's disappearance, including why someone may have wanted to hurt him. According to Hill, Jack's family said they filed a missing person report when he went missing, but sheriff's investigators are still trying to find investigative files from the 1982 case. Jack's remains were first tested for DNA in 2015, but lab researchers were not able to find a match in the CODIS database, which contains DNA profiles obtained by law enforcement. The sheriff's office reopened the case after a Southeast Missouri State University anthropology professor, Dr. Jennifer Bankston, offered in 2021 to help the cold case unit identify human remains. The professor and her advanced students identify which parts of skeletal remains are best for testing and pay through grants and donations for DNA labs to do genetic analysis. Othram, a private DNA lab specializing in cold cases, performed the analysis in Jack Leoneckert's case. Dr. Jennifer Bankston said, The number of human remains still left unidentified is a tragedy of the scale that most people do not realize. Even though my lab is small, I am really proud of my students for helping bring answers to these families. Anyone with information on Jack Leoneckert's case should contact the Lincoln County Sheriff's Office at 636 528 8546 or Detective Alyssa Erson at AERSON at LCSOMO.gov. Anonymous tips can be submitted to the Sheriff's Office website at LCSOMO.gov. The remains of an unknown woman were found in the woods east of Clyde Morris Boulevard and about a mile and a half north of Strickland Range Road in Daytona Beach, Florida, on April 23, 1990. A passerby walking the wooded trail made the discovery. Investigators did not find any clothing or personal property that could help identify the woman. There was, however, a nylon slip wrapped around her neck. It was believed that her life was taken about eight weeks before her body was discovered. The Caucasian woman was estimated to be between 25 and 40 years old and stood at 5 foot to 5 foot 4 inches tall. She had light brown hair that was tied into two pigtails with red bands. She had a lot of dental work done and it was determined that she had given birth to multiple children. Her DNA was later entered into a national database, but there were no matches and the case went cold. Multiple reconstructions were produced over the years, but unfortunately produced no useful leads. In 2023, the Volusia Sheriff's Office Major Case Unit started working with Othram Laboratories. Othram constructed the victim's family tree using information from public genealogical sites. That led investigators to a Missouri woman believed to be the sister of the victim. Detectives contacted the woman in Missouri, who said she had not seen her sister Roberta since 1989. She said Roberta had divorced her husband in 1989 and disappeared. The woman believed her sister was either not alive anymore or living in California. Detectives also contacted three of Roberta's children who said they had not seen their mother since 1989. The sister and a daughter then provided DNA samples. 
On September 28, 2023, Othram Labs confirmed they were a match. The next day, on September 29th, the Volusia County Sheriff's Office announced that the victim was identified as 32-year-old Roberta Bobby Lynn Weber. Her maiden name was Headley. Investigators did not state if they have any leads as to who could be responsible for taking her life. Detectives are asking anyone who might have information to contact the major case unit at 386-254-1537 or via email at coldcaseunittips at volusiasheriff.gov. A woman's body was found by road crews on a highway near Jacksonville, North Carolina in 1990. The discovery was made along the side of the I-40 East near New Hope Church Road, about 50 miles west of Jacksonville in southeastern North Carolina. Officials stated that they believe someone strangled her about one week before she was found and dumped her body on the roadside. Unfortunately, the woman's identity remained unknown for years. This was despite investigators' efforts to learn more about her through potential witness interviews, missing person reports, and facial reconstruction techniques that allowed them to create a bust of the victim and model of her skull. Sheriff Charles Blackwood said, When you cannot close a case, it gets under your skin. You might set the file aside for a while, but you keep coming back to it, looking to see something you did not notice before, or hoping information gathered in ensuing cases has relevance to your cold case. Dylan Hendricks, an investigator with the sheriff's office, took over the case in 2020 and sent hair collected from the victim to Astria Forensics, a DNA extraction company focused on identifying human remains. Hendricks later connected with forensic genealogist Leslie Kaufman to identify family members from genealogy databases and other tools. Kaufman identified the victim's paternal cousins, and DNA from a maternal relative helped to identify the unknown woman. On September 27, 2023, the Orange County Sheriff's Office said in a news release, officers used a hair sample and a genealogist to determine the woman was 20-year-old Lisa Coburn Kessler of Georgia. Little information is available on Lisa Kessler. The Sheriff's Office said she spent most of her life in Jackson County, Georgia, near Athens. With Lisa's remains identified, Blackwood said detectives are turning to possible suspects. North Carolina does not have a statute of limitations on slayings, and Blackwood said detectives will apply the same methods and dogged determination to identify a suspect. I am very happy we solved the three-plus decades-old mystery of this young woman's identity and I hope it provides solace to her family members, he said. A hiker stumbled upon human remains in a wooded area in Newport, Washington, off Highway 2 in 2014. The remains were found on December 2, 2014, near a railroad track where people experiencing homelessness often pass through. The man's body indicated he was also homeless. The Ponderé County Sheriff's Office responded to the scene and found the following items. A single black boot, size 13, with a brand name listed as Brahma. A navy and red striped stocking cap. Pants with a size of 48-inch waist and 30-inch inseam a plaid button-up shirt with the size of XXXL with a brand name of Faded Glory, and a red fleece-style zipped-up hooded jacket. A gold-rimmed pair of eyeglasses were also located. 
The Ponderé County Sheriff's Office canvassed several local homeless shelters in the region in an attempt to identify this individual. An autopsy was done by the Kings County Medical Examiner's Office. The coroner determined the remains belonged to a white, middle-aged man who likely had arthritis or a significant degenerative disease. Dental information was also submitted to the Washington State Patrol's Missing and Unidentified Persons Unit and the FBI's National Crime Information Center database, but no matches were made. In 2015, a DNA profile was extracted from the remains and sent to the FBI's Combined DNA Index System, but again, there was not a match. The case was added to the National Missing and Unidentified Persons System, which holds information on missing and unidentified people. Throughout the years, law enforcement officials continued to work on ruling out missing people. In December 2016, forensic artist Natalie Murray took measurements and photographs and drew a facial reconstruction of what the victim may have looked like in life. The drawing is not meant to be a photograph and is the artist's interpretation of what the man may have looked like based on facial morphology. The hope is that someone will see resemblance or likeness to their missing person and provide leads that will help identify the person. In February of 2017, Carl Kopelman also completed a facial reconstruction on behalf of the Ponderay County Coroner's Office. Then, in 2022, an advanced DNA profile was sent to Othram. Their genealogists and the Spokane County Medical Examiner's Office found a potential relative thanks to a DNA reference test. The remains were officially identified as Randall Reed Priborski's on July 28, 2023, by the Ponderé County Coroner. Randall's family last heard from him in 2003, but authorities discovered he was last seen in 2008 in Old Town, Idaho. He was born in Sioux City, Iowa, and liked to read. Unfortunately, nothing else is known about Randall. In August 1983, Skeletal remains were discovered in a wooded area approximately 25 feet from Sycamore Lane in Crossville, Tennessee. A forensic pathologist determined that the remains were those of a black male, likely between the ages of 20 and 25 years old. The victim had been stabbed multiple times. Despite not knowing the identity of the victim, the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation and Cumberland County Sheriff's Office developed a suspect in the case. In May 1984, as a result of the investigation, the individual was charged and later pled guilty to taking the life of the victim in exchange for a 20-year prison sentence. While the person responsible for the crime was sent to prison, the victim could not be identified. Attempts to identify the Cumberland County John Doe continued over the years, and in 2007, the University of Tennessee Forensic Anthropology Center submitted a sample of his remains to the University of North Texas Center for Human Identification. A DNA profile was developed and entered into the combined DNA index system and the National Missing and Unidentified Person System in hopes that the man would eventually be identified. However, no matches ever came. In December 2022, as part of the Unidentified Human Remains DNA Initiative, Tennessee Bureau of Investigation agents submitted a sample of the man's skeletal remains to Othram in the Woodlands, Texas, for forensic genetic genealogical DNA testing. Othram scientists developed a suitable DNA extract from the skeletal remains 
and then used forensic-grade genome sequencing to build a comprehensive DNA profile for the unknown man. Othram's in-house forensic genetic genealogy team used the profile in a genetic genealogical search to help generate investigative leads that were returned to the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation. An intelligence analyst with the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation scientists used the investigative leads from Othram to locate potential family members in Michigan. Agents made contact with one of those individuals and confirmed he had a brother who he had not heard from in four decades. Agents were able to obtain a familial DNA reference sample to determine if the potential family member was related to the unknown man. Additional DNA testing and a follow investigation positively identified the man as Kenneth Leval Thompson. He was born on November 4, 1965 in Detroit, Michigan. Investigators hope this development will provide some long-awaited answers to Kenneth's family, who last had contact with him around 1982 or 1983. Unfortunately, the only photo of Kenneth that surviving family members could find was taken when he was a child. Anyone that knew Kenneth Thompson during his life and has access to a photograph of him that was taken in late 1970s or early 1980s is encouraged to reach out to TBI. TBI can be reached at 1-800-TBI-FIND.